Lesson 72 on area, part one. So the perimeter is the word that we use to describe what goes around an object, okay? And that would be like if I had a pool here, pretend this is an in-ground pool, that would be like the pool lining that goes around the pool, okay, or the brown part I have shown. The area is what's inside the object, okay? So that would be in this analogy, like the water. And we measure area in feet squared because if this was, let's pretend that along here, I had all these, these feet, okay? <laughs> My picture's getting awful. Okay, so say we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 feet here, all right? And then if on this side I had one, two, three, four, four feet on this side. When they came into the middle here and we're talking about this spot, we're talking about this side and this side. So that makes this whole thing squared, okay? It's two, it's talking about this side and this side. So our area, our label is always gonna be is always going to be whatever this measurement is squared. When we're just talking about perimeter, then that's just one of these things going around. That would not be squared. That would just be the regular label, like feet or centimeters or inches or whatever it is. So think about, let's say that we ha were thinking about a track, okay, and a, and a football field. So we had a football field here, and there was a track that went around the football field, okay? The track went right up to, to the lines right here. So what would we call the spot where the track started that went all the way around? Would this be the area or the perimeter? Right, the perimeter. And the inside, the football field, would be the area, all the grass. In our classroom, what would the carpet be? Right, the carpet on the floor is the area. The baseboards that go around a room or the outline around the room would be considered the perimeter. If you had a garden, the fence that goes around the garden is the perimeter. The garden itself would be the area. So the area is always the inside part and the perimeter is what goes around it. So to find the area, we already know how to find perimeter, right? We add up all the side lengths. To find the area, you multiply the length times the width of a rectangle. If we're trying to find the area of a rectangle, that's what we do, or actually any parallelogram. You're going to just multiply the length or base times the width, okay? Let's look at some examples. This is not hard. It really, once, once you recognize what they're asking, it is so easy to find these. So it says, find the area. And I drew this little thing to show you that one feet times one feet times one feet, like the perimeter of this would be four feet, but one times one would be one foot squared. So that's what we're talking about is squared feet. In example A, we have a 30 foot length and a 55 foot width. So how do I find this? Well, I told you it's just the length times the width. So I'm just going to multiply 30 times 25, okay? And I can write that out and solve it over here, or I can use my mental math strategy and say that 25 times three would be 75, I know that for money, because three quarters is 75 cents, and then I'm multiplying it really by 30 though, which means I'm just gonna add another zero. So this is 750 feet squared, because this is the area. All right, try example B on your own. We got 20 feet and 15 feet. Another type of example might ask you to estimate. And so this one says, estimate how many square inches are needed to cover this rectangle. If they're ever asking you how much is needed to cover it or to fill it 
or how many tiles will cover something or fill something. That's always talking about area. Okay, I'm tiling my bathroom. How many, you know, square foot tiles do I need to cover a distance that's four feet long and three foot wide? I would multiply four times three and get 12 feet squared, so I'd need 12 tiles. So this is, is asking for the area, but it wants us to estimate. So the way we're going to estimate is we're going to round these numbers before we multiply. So I'm just going to round them to the nearest inch. So I have 13.3 inches. Is that going to round up to 14 inches or down to just stay at 13 inches? Good. It's going to round down because 3 is less than 5. So that means that I've got 13 times and then I have 12.1 inches. Is that going to round down or is it going to round up? Good, it's going to round down. So that's going to become just 12. And now I can do 13 times 12, which is 156. And I'm going to give it my label of inches squared. And there you go. That's all that they're asking for there. So we would need 156. Now, Try this one on your own. I want you to estimate. So you're going to round one up or round one down. You have to figure out which one, which way they're going to round. And then you can multiply and bring in your answers tomorrow. Go ahead and get to work.